You ever wondered about Dutch oven cooking? Well, I'm going to show you how it's done. <laughs> so this is a, uh, a charcoal chimney. You use it to put the charcoal in and get it going without any lighter's fluid. Sometimes I'll use lighter's fluid if I want it going quicker. But um, it'll uh, burn up through there. The uh, I put in newspaper and uh, um, a paper towel. The uh, paper, uh, when I wipe out my Dutch ovens and uh, to, to put the oil on them, which I'll show you that uh, in a later video, but I save the paper towel and I stick it over there in my, in my uh, one uh, bench trunk that I've got firewood and stuff in and with uh, some newspapers and it soaks into the newspaper and it burns for a while. It uh, catches fire and burns really good. So this is gonna get going and um, once it's ready, then I will uh, do the food in the Dutch oven. What I'm making today is Christmas dinner. It's Sunday after Christmas, and we haven't had a chance to actually do a ham or anything, so I'm making uh, stuffing. I like to cook outside. I've got an, uh, uh, a ham in the oven in there. I'm going to be cooking some stuff in my barbecue, and then the stuffing in the Dutch oven. So you can sit and watch this burn. This is my wife putting together the stuffing. That broth was made with our turkey that we cooked at uh, Thanksgiving. I take the turkey and cook it down into a big stock pot and then pressure cook it and make my own broth. So just put a little bit of vegetable oil in the bottom of the Dutch oven and rub it in with a paper towel. You do not need to store them with the vegetable oil in it. It goes rancid when you do that. Here's my wife dishing up the wonderful stuffing into the Dutch oven. It'll just about fill that uh, number 14 up all the way. Alright, so the coals are about ready. You can tell when they start to get red on top. Some flames start coming out. It's not smoking any longer. Got the Dutch oven full of the uh, stuffing. It's, uh, my stuffing is pretty simple, just the bread, um, turkey broth that I made for my turkey dinner. I pressure cook my own turkey broth, boil down the, the turkey carcass and make broth with uh, meat in it. And uh, onions, carrots, uh, um, mushrooms, I cut a couple onions in there and then seasoning, thyme and sage and salt and pepper and uh, <laughs> Um, garlic. These coals are about ready, so I'm going to lay a layer of coals here in my fire pit. And you don't want to put too many. People overdo it with the coals. Um, it's the biggest mistake people make when they're cooking with a Dutch oven. You don't want too many coals. You don't want to burn the bottom. If you want it to brown the bottom of what you're cooking, which I sometimes do, then I'll add some a little bit later on. But I'm going to put them in there about the size of the Dutch oven, and they're going to be about that far apart, or you know, an inch to two inches apart each coal, to where I have enough that's about the size of the Dutch oven. And then I'm going to put the Dutch oven down there, and then do the same thing on top. I guess I got to put the coals down first. That used about three quarters of my coal, so I'm going to add more to that, and they'll be ready to go. When those have burned down enough, I need to add more, and this is going to cook for about an hour. That's how simple it is, but you don't want too many coals. I will add some on the bottom, uh, you know, in about half an hour. About halfway through, I'll add some more coals, just to make sure it stays cooking, but uh, it's not complicated if you just do it right. <laughs> Oh, 
Also, I'm more of a purist. I know a lot of people will line their Dutch ovens with foil or with even Dutch oven liners. I don't get that. I just, I honestly don't get it. If you're gonna cook in a Dutch oven, learn to cook in it right. And if you cook in it right, you're not gonna have a mess. That's pretty much a non-stick surface. If I don't get it too hot, it won't burn to the bottom. And how I clean them out, and I'll show you that later, but I use a credit card, an old credit card, or a, a hotel room card. Um, you know, I travel a lot, so I'll just, you know, sometimes I'll take the card. Yeah, I'm one of those kind of guys. <laughs> and then I chop it, I cut it, rounded corners. The one I'm using now, actually, I end up breaking in half, so I'm using two halves of one, but, and then I use just that to scrape it out. Doesn't uh, take a whole lot to clean them out if you do it right. Um, so that's gonna cook for about a half an hour. I'll come add some more coals on it and it'll be done in an hour. my sweet potatoes and a uh, butternut squash. I cook in here a lot, even uh, winter time. It's, it's a nice day actually, it's about 40 degrees out here. Um, still a little bit of frost and snow in my backyard in the shade, but um, I cook in the barbecue a ton, especially if I have something in the oven. All I did was cut up a butternut squash into cubes, double foil the bottom, so it's got double layer of foil on the bottom, sprinkle in some uh, salt and pepper and some garlic and and then real butter. Just chop up slices of butter and put in there. Cover the top with foil, pinch the edges all the way around, close it up. Did the same, exact same thing with sweet potatoes. My wife really loves them that way. Stuck it in here and uh, let it go on low for about an hour. Oh, you know, I live right in the middle of the Salt Lake Valley. Don't thoroughly enjoy it, <laughs> but I'm a country boy, but it's only about a half an hour drive for me to get up to uh, some of the ski resorts up at Cottonwood Canyon. About the same, maybe 15 minutes longer to get up a little Cottonwood. Um, so I mean, within an hour drive, I can be to 10 different really nice ski resorts. Um, which, so I like it. But this neighborhood is awesome. We have tons of birds. You heard that magpie. I've got, uh, I'm seeing one right now back in a tree back there at one point. One day I counted, I think it was 45, 50 magpies in my neighbor's pine trees. So, <laughs> we have a ton of magpies, um, a lot of birds who get back here, jays, um, chickadee sparrows, you know, the pretty little house sparrows, a lot of doves, the native doves and the Eurasian doves, quail, and families of quail living in here, so I really like it. I mean, for where it is, you can hear the traffic out on the some of the main roads sometimes and the planes flying over, but you know, it is what it is. I like the proximity to other things, so I put up with it. <laughs> and the birds are nice. Mmm, <laughs> that smells good. That's about done. I've added another set of coals. You see how much smaller these get. Um, that's one of the first ones right there. You see how little it is now. So you have to, you know, keep adding coals depending on what you're cooking and how long it's got to cook for. But uh, you see the steam coming out of it, um, just leaking out of the side. It's uh, really cooking well. So it should be done. It's been in there just about an hour. So what you do, you need one of these, very inexpensive. This I actually picked up. My dad gave me some old uh, wrought iron stuff this was handmade by a, a guy, it's got a stamp on it, um, Ainsel, uh, from Outman Rendezvous stuff, I've been into that forever, uh, and uh, so I use this, I've got a spatula with it, but you'll need one of these, pick this up, and 
see the, the coals under there, see how much, I mean, they look like they're still going, but they've really gotten smaller. And uh, then you need to take the lid off. Look at how nice and brown that is on top. And you gotta dump these coals off. Look at how nice and brown that is on top. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, that looks good. It, it looks really good, doesn't it? That's our sweet potatoes. Basically just butter, garlic, salt and pepper on them. Really nice, they uh, cooked up really well. They got a little bit brown on the bottom. I call that caramelized. I actually really like it. Um, that was just done there in my barbecuer, set on low, double wrap the uh, with a double layer of foil and um, oh, they taste so good. This is the butternut squash. I absolutely love it done this way. Same thing, just butter, salt, pepper, garlic. Um, just yummy, yummy, yummy. And here's the finished um, stuffing. You gotta love how that turned out. Look at the slightly browned on top. The underside is uh, caramelized. It's not it's not burnt sticking to the to the bottom. It's the underside has just got a nice brown caramelization to it. You can see it right there. It's really nice. My son said it was a little bit burnt. I didn't think so. That was because I added the extra coals on it the on the bottom about halfway through. I put um, a little bit more on there and it helped warm it up and just helped brown that bottom of it. It's really, really good. That's homemade applesauce from our apple tree. Homemade apple cider in the jar and in my cup. And uh, our dinner. Oh, I'm missing ham. I need ham. Okay, now I have ham. I'm set to eat. That's what happens when you put a plate of food in front of me. <laughs> I've actually lost, what, 35 pounds? I was 185 and now I'm about 150, hovering right around 150, so... But I, that's the only meal I've had today, besides one bottle of uh, Slim Fast. This isn't a Slim Fast commercial. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so cleaning up your Dutch oven, I start with the top. You can see it's got all the ashes on it. The underside isn't really get doesn't get really dirty at all, um, unless you overfill it. I just run uh, straight hot water onto it. Let that water get hot, but just I just clean them up with hot water. You can use soap, uh, you know, like dish soap if you want to. Um, I tend not to because it can, can strip away the seasoning. The modern day dish soap does, isn't as caustic. It doesn't have the heavy salts in it that the old stuff did, that the old lye soap. So you, you can use dish soap if you want to clean them up that way. I don't typically. I just wash them down really good with just really hot water. Um, hotter water than my wife can stand. She doesn't do this because they're heavy to lift up and and uh, can't stand hot water. Just, just spray it down, I just wash it down good. This is what I was talking about. Credit, uh, credit card or Holiday Inn Express card. But <laughs> that ended up breaking in half. I take them and uh, just trim them down. You can see how I trimmed that down to make a, uh, you know, just some edges on it. And I'll just take that and just go over the lid here, scrape it off, go around the edge. This edge is pretty important. That's where most anything that's going to get 
cooked in there if, if you if you don't uh, if you've made if you put the food in too high you will get a lot of, of debris on the top here which just comes off easily um, but I make sure you go around the edge I also will use one of these it's an older one that's not quite as hard uh, just a you know scotch bright pad and go over it to help get off any of the excess stuff and go around the edge just really you know, just getting that edge really good you don't typically need to scrub the tops much but i'll give them a good wipe over just really quick get off any of that excess ash and then to dry it I just use paper towels. If you get it nice and hot, that water quite hot, then it uh, evaporates off pretty quick. The trick to this is you do not want to put away a wet cast iron uh, skillet or Dutch oven. It, if, if it's got any water on it, it can start to rust it. So you want to make sure they're nice and dry. I will even sometimes set them on my stove top, just on my range top, and turn the bur a burner on and just let it heat it up briefly. Not to where it's hot, but just to, uh, I've got a gas stove, so um, electric or a glass top stove you can't do. Well, you could do it with electric, but not a glass top stove. But um, wipe it off good. I'll set, like I was saying, I'll set it on the stove top sometimes and just warm it up to make sure any excess water is evaporated off. So, the actual Dutch oven, now this is, it's actually sat overnight. I was too tired last night to, to clean this up. So, doesn't matter. I mean, you won't want to let it set for days on end, but you can see there's a little bit of leftover stuff in there. I could have scraped that out while I was, cl uh, you know, cleaning it out to put away the leftovers, but it just cleans out um, easy enough. Um, so you notice there's still quite a bit of, you know, little uh, leftovers in here that I didn't scrape out when I was putting away left, putting away the uh, the main leftovers. You see how easy that comes off. This is dry. This has been sitting overnight. I didn't clean this uh, last night. I typically will do it the same night, but my grandson and my son were here. I was tired and didn't want to deal with it. But it comes off pretty easy with just basic, uh, you know, Holiday Inn Express card or a credit card. Um, there again, just get it wet, you know, just lots of hot water and uh, just scrape it down. So you'll notice uh, you noticed in the earlier video that when uh, I was seasoning, as you might call it, it's really not, but I was adding oil to the Dutch oven to cook in, it was dry. I do not store my Dutch ovens with oil in them. I know people do. I don't like doing that for one important reason. Vegetable oil goes rancid sitting out like that, and it, it makes your food taste bad. It just gives it that rancid vegetable oil taste. So. When I get done cleaning this, uh, I'll make sure it's nice and dry like the lid and then I will just put it away. I will not put any oil on it until I get ready to cook with it again. So, so cleaning this up like I said, just get water in there and just start scraping out the exit, all the, you know, the leftovers that were stuck to the edge. They're not really stuck. I could have got these out last night when I was taking the leftovers out to put away, but I didn't want to bother with it, so I just left them, but I'll just go through this, scrape it down, clean it out nice and good, and dry it off. That simple. Well, it isn't that simple when you have a big Dutch oven like this. Smaller one, you know, works a lot easier in a, in a sink like this, but um, this is my biggest one. This is the number 14 from Lodge. So I'll just go through and clean it up. So there you go. 
That's how you do a Dutch oven cooking in a nutshell. It's pretty basic. Some people think it's way more complicated than it is. Um, cleanup, as you saw, was not hard at all if you do it right. If you don't burn the food into the Dutch oven, um, it's okay to, like I showed, to even get it caramelized. And we're just, you know, a little bit brown on the bottom, um, but you don't want it too hot. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, um, how to use a Dutch oven. My channel is uh, geared mostly towards my photography, but I've been an outdoors person forever since I was a little kid. Um, been around Dutch ovens ever since I was born. My dad was cooking with them when I was a little kid. And um, just everything outdoors is what I'm about. Everything getting outside, enjoying the outdoors, the wild, um, cooking in it, um, enjoying it. So I hope you enjoy my videos. If you do, hit the like button and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And happy trails.